Peace. This is a meat and potato sorcery production star on myself, the Water Alchemist, and today's topic for the occult family is the left hand path and critical thinking. Some of the greatest benefits of being a witch or a sorcerer dealing with the occult are these things. One, spiritual liberation. Two, individual expression. And three, critical thinking. And I think that as you go far in the occult, and especially if you came out of the so-called Abrahamic programming or certain movements or organizations, you can use that to go to the next level in the occult and even with your magical practices. And I think that especially if you're an occultist of color, you have seen one of the continuing stumbling box of the African centered community. And that would be like, they keep trying to go to a well that's dry. Now, what do I mean? I mean, trying to use scholarship to defeat religion and they're losing that war colossally. They're, they're losing on a grand scale. You cannot use scholarship to defeat a being that has been here and that people are programmed, whether you think it's right, wrong, or irrelevant, you, you're not going to defeat them with history. I've seen people lose in Harlem. I've seen people lose in other cities that come and they want to go back to the laws of Ma'ad and they want to go the route of, oh, well, this came out of this book and this came out of this and that. Trust me when I tell you this, they don't care. And one thing about people from the religious aspect, a lot of them are bad people. It's just that they can't let something go because then their life would be empty without it. And you must know this. And a lot of occultists now know this. They've, they've learned. They have matured intellectually. And we have to also understand this. When people talk about when rituals happen, one of the things that they always like to go to is animal sacrifice, even though it has been documented in the Holy Bible, as well as the Noble Quran, that their animal sacrifice has a lengthier history than anything pertaining to Satanism. Facts. You can just look at the book of Genesis and Leviticus is only two examples right there. So sometimes People say, well, this sacrifice happened. It had to be Satan. But there were sheep and lambs and others that were sacrificed. And in occult practices, whether it be like Santeria or either Ifa, does it happen? Or even Voodoo? Yes, it does. But most Western occultists really frown on African sacrifice. And although I have some criticisms towards Dr. Anton LaVey, even in the Satanic Bible, he was diametrically opposed to animal sacrifice. I know the Temple of Set is, and there's others. They are opposed to it. I'm opposed to animal sacrifice, but in other cultures and other so-called religious practices, I understand that it happens. And I don't paint things with a broad stroke. Let me show you. I don't agree with some of the Hebrew Israelites, but I know that there are some good people within that movement. But I also know of some Hebrew Israelites that have impregnated their own daughters. That's right. That's 100. So you have to be careful. And one of the benefits, as I said, and I want to just accentuate it, is that critical thinking has always been a staple of a true occultist. And let me show you something. And I will say this. Irrespective of your spiritual practice, if you are a demented or unbalanced person, you can only hide behind the spiritual facade for so long. There was a movie, a good movie called Frailty, starring Bill Paxton, rest in peace, and Matthew McConaughey, where this individual who was a single father had a revelation that he was supposed to be the enforcer of God. So he was picking out people and killing them. Now, this was a good movie, and I'm not going to play the spoiler alert, but someone who's demented and unbalanced 
they can take something like that and they can run with it. I've seen that, especially when you look at a lot of people. Oh, I heard these voices. God told me to do this and do that. Someone can take that and run with it. I've, you've even had Shiite Muslims killing children. And what people have to understand is that if you are unbalanced and you want to dominate a person or a group, it, you don't need no okay from a celestial or an infernal being. You're responsible for those actions. They don't have anything to do with that. You think Olo Dumare and Yame had anything to do with the Ma'af for the Middle Passage? No, but there are some people that want to say, oh, well, that happened to Africans because they strayed from the laws of God. No, that had nothing to do with it. It was economic and human exploitation and trafficking. Just like when the Japanese were oppressing the Chinese during the Boxer Rebellion. Did Buddha have anything to do with that? I don't think so. Or what happened to Jewish people in Germany? No, when Hitler rose to power, Hitler had people that helped him that were human first, like Prescott Bush, like the Ford Motor Company, Bank of America. So Jehovah didn't have anything to do with that. So we talk about these things and then we learn lessons because one thing when you are pursuing true knowledge that will always be juxtaposed with humility and retrospection and seeing your hypocrisy because if you see your own hypocrisy or the hypocrisy of your movement or organization people are amped to take you more seriously when you criticize their movements and their organizations. So with that, that is your meat and potato sorcery for the day. I am the Water Alchemist. Be water, my friends. Peace.